Given the set of vectors u, v, and w, where vectors u and v are known, we're first asked to find vector w that would make a dependent set of vectors, and then find w that would make a independent set of vectors. Let's begin with finding w that would make a dependent set of vectors. We're told vector w must be different from vectors u and v. We will also say the vector w can't be the zero vector. Remember, the solution to the vector equation must have non-trivial solutions in order for the set of vectors to be linearly dependent. This also means at least one of the vectors is a linear combination and in the span of the other vectors, which means to make the set of vectors linearly dependent, we simply need to make w a linear combination of vectors u and v, which means vector w must be in the form of c sub one times vector u plus c sub two times vector v. And we can let c sub one and c sub two be any value that we wish. Let's go ahead and just let c sub one and c sub two equal one, which means one possibility for vector w, so that the set of vectors is linearly dependent, would just be the sum of the two vectors. Which would give us the vector negative six, nine, negative four. This is just one of the many possibilities for vector w in order for the set of vectors to be linearly dependent. And let's take a look at this graphically. In this graph, vectors u and v are the red and purple vectors, and vector w that we just found is the blue vector. Notice how vector w is a linear combination of vectors u and v, because it is in the same plane as vectors u and v. Notice how it's also in the span of vectors u and v, which again is the yellow plane. Let's go ahead and enter vector w. So we're gonna use the vector negative six, nine, negative four to make the set dependent. And now let's find the vector w that would make the set independent. In order for the set to be independent, the vector equation can only have the trivial solution, which is when c sub one through c sub k all equals zero. But this also means no vector is a linear combination or in the span of the other vectors. So we probably could easily make up a vector w that is not a linear combination of vectors u and v, but let's go ahead and set this up as a vector equation to get a better understanding of the problem. The vector equation would be c sub one times vector u plus c sub two times vector v plus c sub three times the unknown vector w. Let's let the components be w sub one, w sub two, and w sub three equals the zero vector. And now let's write the corresponding system of equations. We have negative c sub one minus five c sub two plus w sub one c sub three equals zero. The second equation is five c sub one plus four c sub two plus w sub two c sub three equals zero. And the last equation is negative three c sub one minus c sub two plus w sub three c sub three equals zero. And now let's go ahead and write the augmented matrix for this system, where the first row is negative one at negative five w sub one zero. The second row is five four w sub two zero. And the third row is negative three, negative one, w sub three, zero. Remember we want the set of vectors to be independent, which means a system must only have the trivial solution where all of the constants, or c sub one through c sub three are zero, which means we can't have a zero along the bottom row because if we did, we would have an infinite number of solutions and the set of vectors would be dependent. So let's begin to write the augmented matrix in reduced row echelon form. Let's replace row one with negative one times row one. Let's also obtain a zero in row two column one and row three column one. Let's replace row two with five times row one plus row two. And let's replace row three with negative three times row one plus row three. In the first row we have one negative w sub one and zero. 
replacing row two with five times row one plus row two, five times negative one plus five is zero. Five times negative five is negative 25, plus four is negative 21. Five times w sub one plus w sub two is five w sub one plus w sub two. And five times zero plus zero is zero. And now replacing row three with negative three times row one plus row three. Negative three times negative one is three plus negative three is zero. Negative three times negative five is 15 plus negative one is 14. Negative three times w sub one plus w sub three is negative three. W sub one plus W sub three. And negative three times zero plus zero is zero. And now let's go ahead and get a zero in row three, column two. We take a look at row two and row three. Two times negative 21 is negative 42. And three times 14 is positive 42. Let's replace row three with two times row two plus three times row three. So we'll keep row one and row two the same. And again, replacing row three with two times row two plus three times row three, we have two times zero plus three times zero is zero. And then we have two times negative 21, which is negative 42, plus three times 14, which is positive 42, giving a sum of zero. Now for the next entry, we're gonna wanna show some work. We have two times the quantity five w sub one plus w sub two plus three times row three, which gives us plus three times the quantity negative three w sub one plus w sub three. Let's go ahead and simplify. We have 10 w sub one plus two w sub two minus nine w sub one plus three w sub three. Combining like terms, we have w sub one plus two w sub two plus three w sub three. And then two times zero plus three times zero is still zero. Now we can go ahead and stop here. In order for the vector equation to only have the trivial solution, we cannot have a row of zeros along the bottom which means w sub one plus two w sub two plus three w sub three cannot equal zero. And this is key for finding our vector w that will make these set of vectors independent. Since w sub one, w sub two, and w sub three are the components of vector w, we can select any values for w sub one through w sub three that don't make the left side of the equation equal to zero. For example, one, one, one would work. Let's go ahead and let vector w be the vector three, three, three. Why three, three, three? No real particular reason, but notice how we would have three plus two times three plus three times three, which doesn't equal zero, and therefore this will work for vector w. Before we record this, let's take a look at this graphically as well. So now looking at the graph, vectors u and v are still in purple and red, and now the blue vector is the vector w that we just found. Notice how it's no longer in the span of vectors u and v, or in the yellow plane. And now we have a set of linearly independent vectors. So again, we decided to use the vector w with components three, three, three to make the set of vectors linearly independent. I hope you found this helpful.